Okay, today we are playing a game on the Horizon Lunar Colony. We are in the Platinum SR range, and we will be playing Batista the entire way through. This is also a console game, by the way, so consider yourself forewarned. So, our current team, thank God for the replay system, as always. Our current team, Batista, Mercy, Zarya, Ryan, Reaper, McCree. Really average. Basically just like a death ball comp. Like, very boring, standard 2-2-2 two, two, two affair. So, there you go. Uh... Team 2, Team 1 rather, we're Team 2, my bad, we decided to go with the old double shield, but they don't even have, like, a turret, so what's the point, dude, right? Like, come on. Anyway, so we've got to attack Horizon first, which is, as is the case with all 2CP maps when you're trying to attack them, basically. So then McCree is, like, fully up to no good right here. Like, look at this guy, he's fucking in there. So I'm scared right now, because I just heard their Rhine start charging. And I can see that our Rhine, he ain't countercharging. Shit. Because he's looking at this McCree right now. Not that he'd countercharge it anyway. So I would have probably thrown the Immortality Field down way in advance of that. As, basically as soon as I heard Rhine start charging. Because I'm afraid that I'm going to get pinned, a squishy person's going to get pinned, any number of things. McCree's still fucking going in. Didn't work out for him. Just in case you thought, right, that, like, you might eventually climb to an SR where people start do stop doing stupid shit. And for some people, that's plat. They're like, if I can just get to plat, dude, it's clear sailing from there. No, 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 no. Did you see that McCree, though? Did you see that McCree, though? It never gets any better, dude. So we put down the um, amplification matrix right here. It's, I'm not very excited to put it down right here because, well, we're already starting to win the fight. So I'm already feeling like kind of optimistic regardless. But they're in a position where it's really easy for them to get out of line of sight of the amplification matrix. And once they're out of line of sight here, the matrix is doing fucking nothing at that point. Like it can't see shit. So... We do manage to get the uh, Arissa before she manages to scamper away, so that's great and all, but uh, the position isn't great just because it's so easy for them to get out of line of sight, and then it, it's doing nothing. It's not in a productive location, because it's not gonna zone them or anything from up here, right? I mean, it's really hard to get the amplification matrix in places where, like, they can't just get out of line of sight, to be fair, especially on a map like Horizon. So, yeah, but I'm not super excited to put it down right now, when they're likely going to be retreating at this point anyway. I've gone back here to point out we put the amplif or the immortality field down, rather, when there was not much point. Reaper was wraith forming past us, but he wasn't going to come out of wraith form right there and do anything too scary. So I would have rather saved the immortality field for if he started spinning. He shouldn't have started spinning in that situation, but if he did, you know, we'd be ready for it. Um, I, this is going to tie into something later in the email, but I assume we were throwing that one down in anticipation of um, Earth Shatter. And I, not to spoil the answer to the question in the email, I'd rather wait to see if Ryan's going to push Earth Shatter first, because you've got time to throw the, the, uh, immort the immortality field on reaction to it as long as you're ready for it, so I'd rather wait rather than anticipate. In general, I find doing things in anticipation of bad things is usually ends up being sad. Like advice frequent, I frequently give to Zarya players is try not to use your bubbles in anticipation too much, try to use them in reaction instead. Because if you do it in anticipation, you're just setting yourself up for sadness. But if you do it on reaction, it's harder to do it on reaction. But if you can do it, you're always going to get value out of it. Uh, here we heard Deadeye start getting channeled. So we threw it down, I think. I think that was there, Deadeye. Was it there, Deadeye, I heard? Yeah. No. Did they both do it at the same time? No, that's R. McCree that's using Deadeye. There's a 20%. I was like, he built that up fucking fast, dude. No, no, that was R's that did that. Um, I guess it's weird because it was the um, uh, replay rather than uh, the actual game. I was like, fuck, dude. I heard the sound effects. I was like, that's it. 
So, no, I don't. I don't want to throw the immortality field down like this anymore. Um, I guess we, you know, we throw it down a bit on Zarya, but then she immediately backs up. But I don't really want to use the amplification matrix right there, or, or the immortality field right there. I also don't want to use the amplification matrix right there. Because that spot is not exactly ideal. It's in Arissa's barrier. So it's really hard to actually get any use out of that one. We also, in general, didn't really need to jump down off the high ground down there. Because we can still um, get use out of the high ground as Batista. Uh, it makes landing grenades a little bit harder. But it's not exactly like that high ground is very far away. Um, it makes it harder for us to use regenerative burst. True enough. But I mean... Whatever. At the same time, right? Like, a regenerative burst isn't, like... It, it, it's not gonna win any fucking awards, right? Like, it's no fucking bio grenade. This McCree, dude. Thank God he died. Fucking McCree players, man. Um, oh, look, he's got Deadeye now. Um, so, yeah, you know, not to spoil the email question too much, but I don't like using things in anticipation too much. I'd rather use them in reaction, personally. Um... Uh, if your reactions aren't so great, you know, you can supplement that by just anticipating more in advance, but if your reactions, you know, as long as you aren't like a goldfish, essentially. Most things in this game aren't that hard to react to, you tend to get pretty good cues that things are happening. Um, here, it's kind of an awkward angle, but this is a time where we're justified to chuck the immortality field over there to try and keep this Reinhardt alive, seeing as he just did something stupid. Um, it's an awkward angle to throw the immortality field in through, but that would be a time where it would be justified to keep that guy alive. You don't always have to use it to, like, counter ults or anything. You can just use it to keep people alive. Because uh, I was advocating for using it when I heard a pin earlier, so, you know, or a charge, not even the pin yet. Well, look, here comes McCree. Um, but it was a, an awkward angle. I would have been scared to do it just because I'm like, dude, I'm gonna hit a fucking wall and then I'm gonna feel like such an idiot because I use such a big cooldown. It's like such a long cooldown, big cooldown. Like, I just fucking hit a wall. So I'd be afraid of just fucking it up, you know? Um, I no longer want to be this far. Like, we came over here to try and help the Reinhardt because, you know, he's line of sighting us. We could have chucked the immortality field down here to keep him alive as well. Um, but we didn't do that uh, here either. And I just don't want to be over here anymore because I caught a glimpse of McCree and I'm like, dude, I know what this McCree's like. He's going to fucking come. Um, or if I'm going to stick around over here for one reason or another, I don't think I can get out, whatever. Um, I'm just going to try and hold my ground, whatever. Like, I look at that and I'm like, they're coming. <laughs> this is where I'll put the immortality field down in anticipation because they are coming. McCree has shown me what kind of person he is. They're coming, dude. But we could have just been backing up sooner than that also. Like, we didn't go all in to try and save the Reinhardt because we didn't chuck the field at him. So we just kind of, like, went half and half. And, like, you got to commit hard one way or the other. Taking half measures just doesn't really work very well. In life or in video games, usually. Don't half-ass something. Always full-ass it. One way or the other. Always full-ass it, dude. Uh, so their McCree was thinking about it. He was thinking about it, but he decided not to this time. Uh, we can hear Rip Tire coming now. So we definitely don't really want to chuck the uh, Immortality Field in over at that guy right there because we know the tire's up to no good. And hey, Immortality Field gets to counter the tire. Isn't that nice? Um, fairly common question. Immortality Field does stop explosion ultimates from killing you. Self-destruct, rip tire, it'll save you. It'll destroy the matrix or the... Man, I keep doing it. It'll destroy the lamp but you won't die. It'll do the damage to you but it won't kill you. It'll just do the damage, destroy the lamp and put you at the um... 20% I think is the matrix. I'm pretty sure it's 20%. So McCree's coming in because fucking that's this guy dude. Like that's him. Um, so we put the Matrix down, but the fucking, the lamp, oh my god. I don't know, man, it's, for some reason, it's just the Matrix to me. Um, we put the lamp down, which is fair enough, and then we just end up in a, like, real bad spot. I just want to start backing up at that point, pretty much, just because the bad men are coming in, they've not been dissuaded by my lamp, and more of them are arriving. 
Fucking junk, like, fuck it, these guys, dude, like, just Junkrat just emerges from the shadows, like, stab soldier in the kidneys, and then just disappeared again, like he was never even there. These people, dude. Uh, I'm also very glad that our teams are very different colors this time, because the last couple of games we've seen have been like, oh, God, I can't tell these team colors apart at all, dude, but I can finally tell them apart. So we put the matrix down. We've been sitting on this matrix for a really long time. Um, which we don't want to do, but I don't feel like we've had many great opportunities to use it either, simultaneously. Um, the best opportunity we've seen, like, since the first checkpoint, honestly, was probably, like, the first time we got to the point and we jumped down, um, before, uh, where I was agonizing over the armor crate, you know? The, the best opportunity, I guess, would have been to just use it on the high ground for ourselves right there to try and keep people alive. Because you can't, like, you don't have to worry about just using the Matrix for yourself. Like, that's fine. J because, if you, just think about it this way. Like, if you use the Matrix just for yourself as Batista, what you have done is it doubles everything you do. Healing potency and damage, right? So you have effectively created a clone of yourself if you use the Matrix just for yourself. And just, like, having another Batista on the field is pretty sick, dude, so... You don't have to be, uh, concerned about using the Matrix, uh, just for yourself. Uh, okay. Great. Um, yeah, oh, fucking hell. Um, not the first time I've seen that happen in one of these replays, but I was, oh, fuck, dude. Um, yeah, people, like, worry about doing that. Don't be shy to use the Matrix just for yourself as Batista, because if nothing else, you've made a second Batista, effectively, which is strong in and of itself. So, the enemy team have been overextending for the last 20 or so minutes. Oh, God. I saw the tire start appearing right in front of our eyes. So, we, uh, should just be shooting out of here. Our gut instinct is clearly throw lamp on ground, throw lamp on ground, right? But, like, it's far- the cooldown is still far away, and we could just be shooting the tire. If Junkrat's doing that, you shoot that fucking tire, dude. Like, it's only got 100 health, you can chew through it before he fully deploys it. Um, but our, we were clearly just like, lamp, 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 save me, save me. Um, which is an understandable reaction, but the better reaction in that situation is shoot tire rather than attempt to throw lamp. So we managed to capture the checkpoint anyway. Um, they've been overextending for the last 30 minutes, so it's nice that they finally got punished for it and we captured the second checkpoint. Uh, we even have 8.3 seconds on the clock left. And you might think, oh, big deal, 8 seconds, right? But we are now, it's now impossible for us to get put in one of those situations where we can no longer win. Because on a 2CP map, if one team finishes in overtime, but the other team finishes with more than a minute left, the team that finished in overtime doesn't get a time extension. They don't get anything. So then you're in a position where you're just trying to defend the first tick so that you can draw. That's how you get stuck in that. So even having 0.1 seconds on the clock is good because then you cannot get stuck in that situation. You'll always get the extension as long as you've got any time at all left on the clock. So, hey, great news for us. Um, so now we've got to defend, which is less arduous than a, arduous than attacking any of the 2CP maps, but, you know, we're still on a 2CP map, we're still not, like, having a good time, unfortunately, you know, uh, it's very unfortunate, um, what's more unfortunate is that they continue making 2CP maps as well, um, so that, that was their soldier, wasn't it, that just tried to do that, no, that was their Lucio, and he got away with it. Okay, I mean, because he's playing Lucio, they always fucking do, don't they? Those motherfuckers. So, Arissa successfully countercharged the Reinhardt. Um, Arissas are good at that. Reinhardt players are really bad at that. And boy, did this just, like, turn into a catastrophe really fucking fast. So, I know we're like, I want to stand in the immortality field right now. I can't die. Great times, right? The thing is that the immortality field for us as like a long-range healer is in a really bad spot because this is just where they're all coming through in this really confined location. So I don't want to stand in the immortality field. I want to back up further across the catwalk and just throw grenades into this area instead and like shoot into it rather than be standing in here because we could be standing 
just draw. We could be standing back here, dude, and see into this room, hit all the people over here, heal our teammates, and just be, like, way safer. Um, Junkrat appeared out there. Like, we gotta be wary of, like, Junkrat jumping up to us or, like, Reaper teleporting up to us or stuff like that. But the enemy team is pushing into this room. Like, if we are a long-range hero, we don't want to be in that room anymore. All long-range heroes hate people being next to them. Or, like, mid-range heroes. They all hate people being, like, right next to them, dude. It was really just, like... They like their personal space. Um, I see Batista players do that a lot, where they'll, like, throw the lamp down to help people, and then, like, go stand in the lamp as well. Like, you're a long-range boy. You don't have to go stand in the lamp. You can stay far away and still be helping people in the area. So, uh, we jump down right here. It's not really that bad that we've jumped down here because it's easy for us to jump back up again as Batista. Uh, using the amplification matrix is a bit of an overreaction right now because they aren't, like, fully pushing into the point right now. And as soon as we put the matrix down, they're like, well, and I guess I won't, will I? <laughs> like, so I, I wouldn't, don't want to use it like that. I'd rather wait until, like, they actually, like, fully commit to a fight on the point because then... We can just back out the door right next to us over here, put the Matrix down in that doorway, and then we can hit everybody on the point once the fight started, right? Um, it'll be hard for our teammates to make, get value out of the uh, Matrix in that spot, but again, as I said earlier, we don't have to worry about like that. We can just use it for ourselves, and that's fine. Uh, just because throwing it down like that before they fully committed to the fight, it's like, just walk around the corner, and now the Matrix doesn't do anything, right? So I've gone back here because I'm like, we should put the lamp down. This Mercy, like, she's close to the barrier, but Soldier's using Tac Visor, and Mercy's not exactly healthy. I'd rather throw the Matrix down just to try and ensure that she... Or the Matrix. The lamp down to try and ensure that Mercy stays alive. But she lived regardless, so hey, great times. Don't get punished, don't have to learn. Um, this is a pretty um, good map for Batista because of his jump. Uh, his, his, I don't know what the fuck they're called, jump boosters? His knees, his very strong knees are good on maps like this. Because real good stuff to do as Batista is hang around somewhere where you can be fighting. I'm drawing on my fucking OBS window now, oh my god. Is be hanging around somewhere like low ground where you can fight in cover. So like, you know, we got cover both sides of the point here, right? But there's somewhere high ground above us as well. So we can be like in cover down here or in cover up there and then use our strong knees to jump up onto the high ground if bad stuff happens over here. Or we can be up on the high ground. If they jump on us, we can jump down and then use our very powerful knees to jump immediately back up again. Because um, there's if you're hold if you're crouched on the high ground and then you jump off high ground to low ground, if you're holding jump while you're falling, You'll just immediately use your powerful knees once you land on the ground, and you'll just immediately spring back up again. So you can bait divers like that by hanging out on the low ground, crouching so that you've built up your powerful knees, right? You've gotten ready. Jump down off low, onto low ground, hold jump, bounce right back up again. Uh, you do want to hold the jump, because if you just try and tap it as you land, it usually just ends up resetting the jump. Um, and you end up not getting the powerful jump, you end up getting the little baby jump, which does not get you back on the high ground. Um, so anyway, the moral of the story is Batista's real cool, real cool on maps where there is uh, low ground cover that can be converted into high ground cover or vice versa. So this was an extremely dangerous journey we made right here. We are trying to get to this Roadhog right now. We can just jump on the high ground and see him. Like, we can just jump right in front of us right here and get up onto the high ground and we'll be able to see him because like going around this way like they're clearly coming up the staircase after the guy right so if we jump up there instead we don't have to walk past them to do this because we just walked right past a reinhardt and a reaper like that's some scary shit dude and jumping can just entirely circumnavigate that problem. Mercy started resing us, and I'm really glad that she didn't. Because that would have resulted in us dying again. I hate when Mercy players do that. If you are in a situation where you've lost a fight, Mercy players just are like, they try and res someone just like, Fuck it, we lost, might as well res the guy, see if I can. Don't do that, dude. Because in the event you do res the guy, like, you've resed him into a situation where he's just gonna die again. And therefore you could add, ten, like, 10 seconds to his respawn and feed the enemy team a bunch of ult charge, depending on, like, if it's a tank or not, right? Like, 
Because, dude, the amount of times I've seen a Mercy res a Roadhog, like, into an unwinnable situation. And then the Roadhog ends up using Take a Breather as well. And so the Mercy resing the guy just staggered the Roadhog by, like, 15 seconds. And the Roadhog ended up feeding 900 health worth of ult charge to the enemy team. Like, that's the kind of shit that can lose you a whole game right there. Like... Don't do stuff like that if you play Mercy. Oh my god, the amount of times I've seen it, it's very upsetting. So I'm um, mostly fine with using the Matrix right now. They're committed to this fight, and um, we can sit down over here in the bunker with Orisa and use it. So good times. Mercy was going for the res on the Roadhog right there. The exact situation I just outlined was about to happen. Uh, so here we are sidestepping into Junkrat during a lot of this. Um, because there's bombs coming around the corner right there, we just saw. And we continued walking in this direction. Even though the arc on that grenade, there's no way it could be anything other than, like, Junkrat is over in this direction. So we keep sidestepping into the Junkrat and we end up dying for it. We've already won the fight by that point, so it's not the end of the world that we died. But not dying is always preferable to dying. Dying is always very sad. Um, best avoided if possible. I like how Maze walled that guy off, but she's on the opposite end of the catwalk, so Reinhardt just ends up being really uncomfortable for a little while, rather than anything actually happening to him. Uh, I just heard him start charging. Yeah, we're look looking around right now for somebody else, but I just heard Reinhardt start charging, and I was like, oh god, I just had a horrible vision of us getting pinned from behind while we were looking away. Uh, so, bad things happening kind of all around us right now. Um... Hey, she got him. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times, good times, good times. Um, I would have been tempted to throw the Matrix down, or the, fuck it, the lamp down to keep May alive, but it would have been an overreaction, to be fair. She actually wasn't that close to death, though it was a little scary for a second. And we ended up uh, using the uh, lamp when Ryan used Earth Shatter. Uh, unfortunately, the lamp isn't necessarily any guarantee of safety from Earth Shatter, you know? The lamp is really cool because it saves you from some stuff that you can't save people from. Like, it'll save you from self-destruct, Riptire, and all that. Which, supports don't really have much in the way of stopping that outside of Lucio, so that's nice, but... The lamp ends up being really bad at saving you from certain things, like Blizzard. The lamp does nothing to save you from Blizzard, dude. Blizzard lasts so long, they just break the lamp and kill you, so it's that's, like, very sad, but... Hey, it gets to stop, like, Riptire and Self-Destruct, which is, like, something only Lucio was capable of doing, and even then, not always, right? So, it's nice. It's nice to have a support in there that has, like, a really consistent counter to Riptire, uh, and Self-Destruct. Pulse Bomb, as well, actually. Um, all explosions, basically. It's nice having a support that has a counter to that stuff. Because, like, Pulse Bomb, as well, like... Even Lucio, like, if you were gonna counter Pulse Bomb as Lucio, you had to, like, really, like, hard read what the Tracer was gonna do. Because you can't, like, see the Pulse Bomb come out and then on reaction sound barrier, right? Like, you've gotta be ready for that shit. Um, but Batista, you can use the lamp on reaction for Pulse Bomb, so that's nice. Especially, like, Pulse Bomb, it's hard for... Like, if P Tracer sticks someone... Ari previously, Zarya was the only person that could save them, but now Batista can save them as well. So, you know, it's just nice to have things like that in the game, really. Um, so here comes their Reinhardt. That was very dumb of him to have done that. I don't want to use the lamp right now, because we're just looking at two supports. Uh, there's a soldier in there as well, actually. But, like, we're not looking at anything particularly scary. Um, I'd rather save the lamp in that situation. We get into a fight with their Batista, and boy, did we thoroughly trounce that guy. Like, I don't think he hit us once. Like, boy, did he get dunked. So, they've got one push left. We can see they've got two ults, though we don't have the benefit of knowing that ourselves, unless we've been tracking their ultimates. Um, we've got a lot of ults to use right now, though. Both our D- all, all three of our DPS, rather, have got their ults. We've got our ult. Um, only Arisa and Bridget are missing there, so we're, we're looking pretty good. Um, where are they coming from? Here comes their Tracer. Uh, there's the Self-Destruct. Um, not exactly in a very scary spot. 
did the shield get broken, like, right as that happens? Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> that feels bad. Damn. Um, so Ryan used Earth Shatter right there. Didn't accomplish much. I, I don't really like using the amplification matrix right here. Like, right I, what I'd rather do is, like, this happens, so user generative burst, fair enough. Um, maybe just chuck the amplification, uh, probably just chuck the lamp in there as soon as I saw I was using Earth Shatter, just assuming he's gonna hit people, to be honest. But then I, like, back up and put the matrix down just for myself, because I don't want to be involved in, like, this clusterfuck that's about to break out. I don't want to be in that personally. I'd rather back up, use the matrix just for myself, so that I can keep people in that clusterfuck alive, and then, you know, there's a soldier on our team, he can, like, cut soldier and McCree, they can come over and stand with me if they want, like, I just don't want to put it down and then, like, wade in to all of that, like, just horrible mess, really. So, hey, let's look to see what the out YouTube algorithms got, right? Colonies of the Condemned? That's the kind of thing I'd watch. Fucking, dude, no interest at all. The fascinating facts about Al Capone's final use. That's something I would watch, also. Why Hollywood won't cast these 12 actors anymore? Okay, no interest. Wild West, no interest. Uh, Gay Hollywood, The Last Taboo? Eh, maybe. 10 creepy photos with disturbing backstories. I know about this photo, and it's just like... Uh, the guy, like... I've seen this one in so many different fucking videos, dude. Like, oh, there was no dog in the room, but look, there's a dog here. No one reported seeing the dog, so... Our man here, like, he did some bad stuff in the past, so he saw this, and he thinks it's a devil looming over his shoulder, and he turned his life around after that, right? Like, yeah... You know, it's kind of spooky, but like, it could also just be like a pattern on the wall, right? Like, that's always the thing. It's a pretty good pattern, must admit though. I like games done quick, good times, good speed runs. Scariest things caught on live TV. Like, what is that? Ex enhance. Oh god, don't do that, no. Oh god, there it goes, there it goes. I've clicked on that by mistake. Hold on. What the fuck was the red outline even around? Everybody stop what you're doing, alright? This is the most important thing to me right now. Come on. Oh, it's something different now. Oh, it just completely changed before my fucking eyes. Alright, ten most dangerous airports in the world. That looks pretty dangerous. It's like landing on the water, I guess. Shit, dude. Alright. <laughs> um... From Google Maps to 3D and Photoshop. Eh. Primitive technology with survival skills, casting fish hooks and giant. Okay, great. Overwatch all animated shorts. No thanks. That's okay. Top 20 knockouts in UFC history. You watch the fucking Joe Rogan podcast, and this is what you get. This is your award. Sharpest bismuth kitchen knife in the world. Alright. Minecraft speed. No thank you. One ultimate tip for every hero. Great. Dude, it just like completely fucking changed. Right before my eyes. I'm a little upset about it, to be honest with you. Anyway, alright. Oh, fuck. Right, I gotta... I didn't bring this over here. Oh, God. Oh, what a professional operation we run around here. So I got two questions in the email. One I've already kind of answered, but anyway. For future reference for console, would you rather the videos come from the replay system, where it has the team comps up top, or would you like the video from the share system on PS4, where you can hear comms? Uh, for me, personally, I'd rather have the, um, replay system. It just makes life easier for me. Because you can see the team comps, I have to do less video editing as a result of that. And I like being able to see the silhouettes through the walls, um, honestly. Uh, the comms I would be more interested in if you were playing in, like, a large stack of people. Like, if you're playing with, like, three plus people, I would be more interested in hearing the comms at that point, but... Just overall, I'd rather have the um, replay system just because the UI is much better. But please have the team colors different colors. We did in this video, so that's great. But like, like the last like two videos, the fucking colors have been like nigh identical and I'm fucking colorblind. So like it was really unhelpful for me. But generally, I'd rather have the replay system. Unless you're in a large stack of people. And second, sometimes when I'm playing Batista, I throw out Immortality Field in anticipation of an alt-like shatter. 
Is that bad or should I always do it on reaction? So I don't think you always have to do it on reaction, but I do think it is generally best done on reaction. Um, Cause like, there are some things where it is very safe to assume damage is coming in the near future, right? Like, um, Genji's using Dragon Blade. I mean, this is on react. To be fair, that's on reaction. Um, like, you see Reaper teleporting into the middle of a group of people, right? He's got one plan, right? He's got one plan when he's doing stuff like that. He might have a different, it might be just like, hope I shoot someone, but like, it's probably alt, right? So like, in that kind of situation, like, he's, he's, he's definitely trying to do one thing. So then, fair enough, like, for that kind of situation. But like, if he's like, wraith forming into people, like, it's highly possible he'll just like, come out of wraith form and shoot at someone, rather than start using Death Blossom, right? So I would rather wait until he comes out of Death Blossom, and I'm just, I'm like, I'm ready, right? Like, I'm anticipating it because I'm ready for it, so I'm, right? But like, I'd rather wait to make sure he actually does it before I use the lamp, because I've seen like Zenyatta's do this kind of thing all the time, right? And it's like way worse to do it with Zenyatta than Batista, to be fair, but like, so often I've seen like Reapers coming out of Wraith form and Zen just uses Transcendence as he's coming out of Wraith form. And then like, even if Reaper was going to ult, he won't now, will he? <laughs> like, so like, I, I'm of the mindset where it's better to like wait and confirm that it's going to happen first and do it on reaction. But like, even then, like you're still anticipating it at the same time, right? Like you're anticipating it and you're ready for it rather than doing it purely on reaction. Though sometimes you have to do it purely on reaction. You almost hear Reaper start death blossoming behind you like, fuck, right? Just throw it at your feet. But like, you can anticipate these things like Reinhardt starting to play ag aggressively. You can anticipate it's coming and then as soon as you hear him start shouting, you can just throw it down. So like, you can anticipate it, but like, reaction at the same time um this is you know this is something i also like learned from learning how to play a fighting game is like everything that looks like it's reaction is a lot of the time still anticipation because people can only ever do a certain amount of things at any one point in time right so like Part of the game is like seeing what they're doing right now, what kind of spot they're in, what op and like figuring what options they have available to them, and then figuring what the most likely thing that they're likely to try is. Like playing a fighting game, right? You're in the corner, you're thinking like, all right, well, he just did an overhead, he might now try to grab like right as he lands, because that's a way to mask it. So like, I'm ready now to tech the grab if he does that, you know? You're and it's not that you're reacting to it, you are, but you're, like, thinking of it ahead of time, which makes it easier to react to when it happens. So, like, if Reinhardt's, like, pushing through the choke point, like, really aggressively, if he, like, starts shield hopping towards your team, he's getting ready to earth shatter, right? So, like, you wait, and you react to him using it, but you're expecting it, which makes it easier to react to. Um, Reaper's wraith forming into me. Like, he's probably gonna use Death Blossom, so, like... I'm, but I'm ready to do it. I'm not going to do it ahead of time. I'm ready for it to react to it once he starts doing it. You know, that's the kind of thing that I think is best done with this kind of ability, right? He's like, you're ready for it for when it happens. You're anticipating it, but you're not going to do it until you see him actually start doing it or hear him start doing it. He's like, it's a lot easier with most things. Like, humans react to audio stimulus faster than visual stimulus. So, like... This is why it's easier to counter, like, Earth Shatter if you're listening for the voice line, rather than watching for the animation. Because he starts do it, he starts shouting as soon as you push the button, and humans just react to audio faster than visual, so... Um, you're just, like, ready for that kind of stuff, and that makes it easier, I find. Um, anyway, so, there you go. I was really rambling and incoherent, but hopefully you get the idea. So thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you, if I, if you felt I answered your questions from the email inadequately, please let me know and I will try to expand further. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just shit post with us. I've started streaming on Twitch Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 8 p.m. EST till midnight EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.